today we are going to talk about the Ring of Solomon. Now, the Ring of Solomon is not something that you have to wear, but it's actually a ring that is on your hand. And where is it located? Well, it is located, as you can see on the picture, it is located just under the Jupiter finger, the index finger. And this location is actually very important. As you can see on the illustration, there is a perfect uh, ring of Solomon. First, it's on the Jupiter mount, and Jupiter shows the direction. So it's usually the finger of ambition, the finger of uh, uh, my place in society, it's the finger of that shows teachers or how you want to achieve something in life. And also, because the ring is linking the inside world, so the inside world is the, the thumb part, and it's actually linking it to the outside world, it's bringing together like your, your own self to others. So the Ring of Solomon is a ring of wisdom. It allows you first to be interested in others' behavior, psychology, knowing people, and also because you are interested in them, you can give them good advice and they can learn from you. So because you give them advice, they will listen to you. Now, it's a type of um, sign on your hand that is not black and white. It doesn't mean that because you have a ring of Solomon, you are wise, for instance. But it sort of leads you towards it. So it's a good thing to have. And in the case that we are going to study today, as you can see on the print, the person doesn't really have a ring of Solomon. Like there is a tiny little shape of one, but we couldn't call this a ring of Solomon. And as you can see, the mount of Jupiter is relatively bare. It's not much happening there. And this is basically what was happening to this person. He was more surviving than living. At the time, he was about 18, and he didn't really know what he was going to do in life. He was relatively shy. He just he, he enjoyed being at home, maybe playing video games. And it, it, there was no real desire to connect with people and no real desire to improve himself. So that's the way it was. And then I took his prints about 20 years later, and you can see the new print 20 years later, and you don't have only one ring of Solomon, but two. Now, the more ring is not necessarily better. And I cannot say that these rings are perfect because it's only part of rings. It's actually better when there is one that is connected the whole the whole length. But we are not going to be picky about that. We'll just accept it, the fact that he was able to develop not only one, but two rings of Solomon. So what happened to him? He did become wiser. Yes, he did. In this case, entirely true. He grew up. He started to work and do something that he really, really loved. And this was actually playing an instrument. He also got married and he had a child. So, of course, he couldn't just be interested in his own little self. He had to open up. So he had to be a good father. He had to be able to... Um, like to, to raise the child and to be with his wife. And because he was playing music, of course, he was involved with a band and he was involved with the audience. So he needed to actually open up. And because he was a relatively wise man, because the rest of his hand, you haven't seen the rest of his hand, but I can tell you he had very good lines there. He was able to be the type of person who could give advice and people 
would come to ask him for advice. He was able to learn. He's still learning, taking courses, doing everything that a good Jupiter is supposed to do, good place in society, learning, teachers, uh, attracting people, being social, and finding what he really wanted to achieve in life, which is to make beautiful music so that he can make people happy. And this is what a good Ring of Solomon can do. As I said, the Ring of Solomon is not only one thing, usually it's a combination of things. But in this case, this man was able to go from no ring to two rings of Solomon. And I always find that this is an amazing change. Mm -hmm.